my name is Tony McAlpine, and I'll be here with you for the better part of an hour discussing the finer points of guitar playing and the mechanics of improvisation. I have prepared several exercises and progressions to play over for the purpose of examination. So without further delay, let's begin. Hammer-ons, hammer-ons, hammer-ons. Everybody does them, everybody loves them. But I just really wasn't satisfied with that a little too much because um, things start to sound really samey. Um, you know what I mean? Playing the hammer-on like that type of idea. I wanted to get away from that. I wanted to work towards developing more of a, a creative type sound as applied to the same type of technique. Well, that I tried to make evident in songs like um, hundreds of thousands, on the Maximum Security album on Squawk Polygram. Remember that lick? The moving hammer on. Well now, we're at a new day and we have to try something else. So exercise number one here is introducing the idea of overtones. That real bluesy type sound that you get when you play two notes together with distortion. It's not a speed lick, it's more, it's more of a tasty type approach. Again, in our pursuit of a different type of application, we're going to take that same principle that we established with the hammer-on, with the bar effect, but by moving our fingers and breaking up the chord, the barred chord, we're going to get a, a very distinct type sound. I particularly like this this particular look because I, I can use this in, in, in different places over the neck without without dealing with that overtone. And it, it's a lot easier to move it around. Another thing that I really like about it is the, the repetition of, of C here. We have C here on the B string, and we have C here on the E string. It's played twice sort of like a saxophone kind of This being our last barred type of little hammer on here, um, it's also it's also a little different too uh, because the left hand here is playing it distinguishes the chord rather. In this case, we have D major. And in this hand, we have D major also. The trick being we have two triads. 
and we're playing in different inversions. have here is a scale, a C minor scale, and we have the octave that I'm tapping, with the index finger. It creates a, a chimey type sound, a, you know, very church bell type of type effect. I use that like, I think, in a song, Agrionia, on, Ag on Edge of Insanity. daring because now the left hand is doing all the work and the right hand gets a little bit of a break. The left hand is, is hammering the arpeggio out. And the index finger here is tapping the high note. In this case it's an A. And this is an A, mar a major. An A major little hammer on here. Make it minor, we flat the third tone. Major. You might remember this uh, little hammer on in the uh, Song of Vision. Now that we have discussed the four different methods of uh, applying this type of hammer on to your style, um, we should really work now towards developing more flexibility in it so that it can become more signature, it can become you. That, that, that's very important to do. Um, what I've tried to do in the past is to take the things that I've heard and the things that I've learned, and especially my exposure to classical music when I was uh, very young, when I was five, um, I tried to develop that. I tried to make things something that I could relate to others with. Um, there's tons of stuff out there to, to do that with, especially especially the contemporary guitar players that are out there today. I mean, you see that a lot. That's why, you know, blues has been around so long and the hammer-ons have been around so long and, and they're probably going to be around a lot longer than uh, you and I are going to be around. So uh, that's important to keep that in mind. Um, the progression that I have coming up, I'm going to definitely approach it as if um, it's going to be around a lot longer than a minute, but it's not going to be. Okay, it's only about a minute long, but I'm going to try to apply so many different things to it uh, stretch out a lot of the ideas that I've covered on this on this neck that I've showed you. It's very important. And uh, let me try to do that. <laughs> Thank you. 
at the point where we are going to discuss Legato. Legato is really a connection of tone. It, it, it implies that melodies played together should be played very smoothly. In other words, if you have a scale, uh, an A major scale, you play the notes very smoothly without any, without any disconnection of, of one tone to the other. If that happens, what you have is staccato, and we're going for legato. So one of the ways that I achieve that type of sound is by not picking every note. Okay, and with my left hand, I concentrate with a lot of weight on the fingers. Almost as if the fingers are like hammers again. That same kind of technique can be applied to certain licks on the guitar. In this instance, I'll move up to this fret. Tenth fret with our index finger. And we sort of just hammer on like a like a triplet there. Very smooth sounding like it's very very fluid like that's because the technique in which I am picking is almost like a reserved type technique I'm picking one stroke for every three notes that I play and the left hand is taking over with that that very hammer like style and that that it makes it sound very smooth another way that I can execute this particular lick is by not using the plectrum at all simply it's a great exercise also to play. To play just with your with your left hand, producing the tones. Really strengthens the hand really too. This particular lick is another one of my favorite ones. Um, it encourages you to develop the ability to hammer on on separate strings. In this particular exercise, I'm starting on the 15th fret with my second finger. And basically pulling off to the first finger, the index finger, and hammering on the second string. And these notes, be able to play these notes with the same volume so that you can hear them repeating so you get that repetition it's very important to get that In this D minor scale, again, I'm employing the legato style, but in a little bit different format, basically. I'm sliding from D to E. Each time I encounter D on the various strings, I slide a whole step over. So that enables my, my hand to be in a position to, be, to get greater access over the neck. In reality, that, that, that's very strong for me because uh, if I'm improvising, uh, if I'm playing over solo, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm basically not stuck. I'm not, I'm not trapped in a box. A lot of times, you know, this enables me to, to move around the neck. I like that. I like that very much because one of the patterns that I've, I've, I've discovered that I, I can um, pull off in many different situations is, is like an, almost like an alternate picking style 
but um, kicking down once, sliding over, kicking up. It's a pattern I do quite a lot. It's a very fluid type sound, and, and, it, and it helps me uh, when I'm improvising. This particular exercise is one of my favorites because it sounds different than the normal legato type technique. It sounds almost as if you're, you're hammering on notes. But we're basically, we're doing it with one hand. We're doing it with the left hand, which, which, is, which is important. I like that type of exercise because it strengthens my fingers and it enables me to get a clean sound when I'm working on different strings, back and forth. So try that very slow and... Again, it sounds very similar to... just completed uh, four of my favorite exercises um, with the progression coming up it's very uh, reminiscent of a, of a song a solo that I had in Age of Insanity um, it's a hammered on type solo very smooth again uh, without too much picking I'm trying to play the notes very cleanly and, 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 and loud enough so that it sounds as if I've mastered that particular technique Okay.
Okay, now we're going to move on to arpeggios. Basically, by arpeggios, we mean a broken chord. Um, a broken chord is, for example, if I play an A minor triad, or with a clean tone, sound a little bit more clearer. By playing each one of the notes separately, this creates the arpeggio. I had a JX3 piece synthesizer, and I used to always play around with it, and what I used to do is come up with these really cool stretched out arpeggios and, and try to copy that, with, you know, with the guitar. But it always sounded a little choppy. So I tried to think of a way to, to execute them where they, where they had the same type of sound as the synthesizer. And uh, that particular type of execution, I, I, I basically am I'm hammering on with the left hand here. And I'm tapping with the right hand. So this is a C major. 7 arpeggio and basically I'm tapping on the B The tap acts as a pivot point much like when you're playing piano and you're playing a scale your thumb would come over and enable you to get into different octaves on the keyboard. Well, that's exactly what happens here. And you should keep that very clear sound. In this particular exercise, we are employing the D minor triad as the basis for our arpeggio here. Um, by triad, I mean one, three, five of the D minor scale. One, three, five. The tricky part about this, though, is that I'm hammering on on different strings. But I'm employing the same type of pivot point to move around the neck. This example of the A minor arpeggio, it's a seventh arpeggio, is built around the, the A minor scale. In this particular arpeggio, I am not hammering on anymore, I'm using the pick again in the alternate picking method. It keeps it a, a tougher, you know, type sound again. favorite licks. This particular lick I've used quite a bit, maybe too much. I've used it on Edge of Insanity, I've used it on The Raven, The Taker, various songs like that. It, it's 
It's one of my favorite licks. I have a lot of these favorite licks. Um, this is, of course, employing the up and down method, the alternate picking method. And we're stretching a little bit farther than the seven, which is G, we're going all the way to A. Basically, it gives the, the arpeggio a, a fuller sound. It sounds as if it's about to continue somewhere else. This particular exercise is a combination of both of them together. I would think that after you've mastered the, the two of them put together that you could employ, employ these all over the neck in that, that type of fashion. Especially moving down the neck chromatically. It's very helpful. Keep in mind that it's very, very important to stress the different styles and really practice those styles so that you can develop a continuity in your playing. It's very important to have that. Um, I stress that and I try very much in, in my career as a guitar player to continually introduce different styles in my playing. Uh, examples one and two, um, the hammered on type arpeggios, are prevalent on the new album Eyes of the World. And examples three and four, of course, like I've explained, you've heard those on Edge of Insanity and Project Driver, those type of albums. Now, with this piece here, we're going to demonstrate the different styles and how to incorporate those into your playing to come up with that concise statement. <laughs> The first exercise that I'm going to begin to examine here is a C minor rotation lick. And it's built around the principles of a C minor scale, played from A flat to A flat. Now, I primarily call it a rotation lick because what I'm doing is I'm starting with C, the B string. When I get to A flat on the E string, I turn around with three notes on the string. You turn around in the A flat on the G string and head back the other way. So that's that type of sound.
Later on, you can speed the lick up once you develop that type of control. So that you can get that type of sound. Example number two is a rotation lick also. What this employs is the ability to play seconds descending down from the top of the neck or the top of the strings, the dinner strings to the bottom. The rotation factor comes in when we start the G major scale. We rotate downward in that fashion. Example number three is a C minor lick that deals a little bit more with the preparation of where you're going to end up after you've executed the lick. For that purpose, I start with an upstroke. And with a downstroke. Ending with a downstroke enables me to move on to other licks. Another example of that particular exercise is to try to employ them on the lower strings of the neck. Down here, it seems to be a little bit easier to, to introduce the muffling, which is the palm of your hand on the bridge here. It sort of deadens the string, it gives it like a tougher sound. These studies from one to four that we have taken the time to dissect and take apart and look at and see how we could apply to our playing to make it stronger can be very instrumental for just that purpose. Um, I've tried to make them very instrumental uh, on the instrumental album, Edge of Insanity, and the vocal album, Project Driver, and the new album that will be released uh, very soon, it probably already is released, um, Eyes of the World. Um, keep in mind that it's very important to exercise a lot of control before you try to take those up to the higher atmosphere, the higher speed. Okay, so here's a small example of what we can work towards.
Example number one introduces the repetitive pattern that I am incorporating in a chromatic fashion. This is a very powerful sounding lick. Um, I've used it in the quarter to midnight solo on Edge of Insanity. And it, it, it sounds very effective. By chromatic, I mean going down the neck in half steps, which is in this fashion. It's almost like a, a sequence type idea because it's repeating itself, it's repeating the formula as we, as we travel down the neck chromatically. Um, practice that very, very slow until you develop a sense of rhythm and confidence in your pick. Example number two continues the theory of, of repetitive sequence ideas, except in this instance I am not descending down in a chromatic fashion. I'm going down in repeating the same idea in different octaves. Um, I've done this also on, on an album, Maximum Security on Squawk Polygram. The song was called Division. Uh, it, it's a very daring, challenging type sound. It introduces a lot of a lot of jumps, particularly from F sharp to C sharp. And on this particular exercise, I pick twice in the same direction to minimize the minimize the risk of missing that note. If you want, you can expand it as you can a lot of these exercises that we've that we've covered in this in, in this instruction video. You can expand this an octave lower. This is a very helpful little exercise to practice with a metronome. This example incorporates the same repetitive type picking pattern, the up and down procedure, alternate picking. Uh, this exercise can be played in a chromatic fashion also. One of the things I like primarily about this is that your fingers are working very close together, a lot of close work. Um, primarily between the B and G string, there's, there's a lot of half steps going on. And we have a third jump, a major third. I really like that that lick. It's it's a lot of fun. It's it, it's really flashy sounding, and and I've used that quite a bit to to hammer out my style to to make it sound really effective. One of the things that I've worked a lot with this one is a lot is a lot of slow work and moving it up the neck instead of descending downward.
Again, we have the same type of idea, the repetitive alternate picking, but now we're moving through this scale. We're moving through an F-sharp minor scale, and what this creates is a almost like a you know mathematical type feel, a, a, a very very sequential type ordering to the notes. We have here the F sharp minor scale going up to A and turning around and going to D. And then we repeat that same pattern of going up the third and turning around and going to B. Then the G sharp and so on. This type of run is very interesting to me because it's introducing a, a new way of playing the, the minor scale, for example, that we have here. For the purpose of discussion, I have an F-sharp minor scale, of course, and I go up to A, three notes, that introduces our sequence idea. Going to D, I do the same pattern again. So we have an F-sharp, on D, on B, and on G-sharp. Played together creates a... Very pleasant sounding scale. This exercise can be quite difficult because no longer are we just dealing with the up and down stroke, the alternate picking. We're picking in the same direction twice. Now we have to continue to keep the rhythm the same while we're playing this particular exercise without breaking up the strokes, without breaking up the monotony of the tone or the rhythm, so to speak. <laughs> A sharp to B, I'm picking down twice. The rest of the notes are alternate picking patterns. This repetitive pattern category is very important to me and it's been very important uh, to the development of my style. It's been very obvious uh, that I've used it in uh, the instrumental records that I've done because uh, the type of music that I write, it's, it's very classic oriented and you have to have a strong picked style, especially today, to be able to play that kind of stuff. Uh, to develop that kind of stuff, I worked very diligently with it. I worked very slow and I worked with a metronome and for hours just really a lot of slow work and it, it, it really pays off. It gets to the point where you really feel it happening. You don't have to think about it so much. It's just your hand and your, and your mind and your pick and your heart, they all go to the same place. And I think that's what we're really trying to achieve with, uh, w with this video. We're trying to tie in that guitar with, with what you're thinking and what your, what your heart is saying so that it's just one, it's, it's just one plane of thought. I mean, if, if you have to think too much, or you have to force your hands or you have to you have to do something that you really can't do that easily. That means you really should slow down and, and really examine what, you, what you're trying to do and develop that control at a slower pace before you try to do something that, that you're hearing. A lot of times you hear guys that are, that are doing uh, you know, very effective, very fast things. And uh, don't let it fool you because it, it, there's a lot of slow work involved in that, in that kind of stuff. I mean, everybody really sits down and, and practices very slowly. So I can't overemphasize that. I, it's very important to have that type of... Uh, that type of uh, effort applied to your playing. This last progression that I'm going to play to is, um, is a great vehicle for that type of thing. Um, there's going to be a lot of uh, alternate picking very quickly, a lot of sequence patterns, and um, a lot of things that I particularly enjoy.
I've been working a lot of my own new musical ideas uh, with my band McAlpine, and hopefully um, you'll have a chance to see me on tour in the near future. And really keep practicing and keep creating. That's what counts. Thank <laughs> you.